We'd like to welcome all those that are joining us online now. It is such a privilege it is for us to be together. Uh, we are online. Uh, we each Sunday morning starting at 7 o'clock a.m. Uh, on Wednesday morning at 7 a.m. Uh, you can catch a Wednesday night service if you're in the area. We would welcome you to come. Uh, we have something for all ages every Wednesday night uh, at 6.45. And uh, so please note that. We'd love to have you or your family to come and be a part of us. Uh, but if not, please join us online uh, because we appreciate you there. Please share also if you would there so we can reach and meet uh, and minister to other people. On Saturday mornings, we have beginning at 10 o'clock a.m., we have a story time. And uh, we are going on location, so you're going to see us in various places uh, during the month of October. Uh, we're going to be in a pumpkin patch. Uh, uh, that's one of the things we've, we're going to be doing. We'll be doing some other places there. We were in uh, Florida. You, I'm not sure. Uh, I think maybe there still may be a couple Florida shots that may be coming in here. So, uh, so we're doing some other special things. We're in the book of Acts online. Uh, we'll be doing some other things here in our sanctuary. But we're glad to have you in whatever, uh, that, uh, whatever way that you are able to join in with us. Thank you for doing that here. Let me share one verse of scripture. I've got it part of, as part of our scripture in Habakkuk. The second chapter, verse 14. I'm reading out of King James. Just listen to these words. Very short verse. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea. Wow. The glory of the Lord's all around, folks. The glory of Jesus Christ. There's nowhere that you and I are going to go that he's not there. Uh, he was there yesterday for us. He's here today. And whether we're here on this earth tomorrow or whether we're in heaven, he's there. That's the Lord that you and I serve. And the prophet uh, Habakkuk was reminding us there that God is there for the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God. Just as the waters cover the sea. May God add his blessings to the reading of his rich and holy word. Carolyn, come and lead us if you would, please. I raise a hallelujah. 
Psalm 147, the fourth verse says, he determines the number of stars and calls them each by name. The words are up here. Join the choir if you would like while you're seated. could have our boys and girls to come up and parents if you need to come with them feel free to do so mr aaron has a special message for you and he has a, a bulletin there to give to you too here parents if you need to come feel free to do so with them here didn't they do a wonderful job last sunday the our children's choir that was wonderful to see them sing. and we had seven babies i think we're going to have at least three maybe maybe more here uh, next year that we're going to do so mr aaron share with us we got a crowd up here today. We can make room scoot over a little bit so everybody sit down. How about just sit on the floor here? I'll sit over. I'll sit on the floor. That works. So we're gonna we're gonna play a game. We're gonna play a game, and you got to tell the truth, okay? Who here, who here has ever got in trouble for talking back to their parents? No, my goodness. So who here is who here thinks there has the biggest muscles and the strongest? God. God. I'm talking to y'all, not God. <laughs> Does anybody here have big muscles? Me. Let me see them. <laughs> my goodness, those are pretty big. So did y'all know that your tongue and your mouth is the most biggest, strongest muscle on your body? Yeah. You don't. Yeah. It can't be. Do you know what? No, but do you know why it is? Because what you say. Oh my goodness! Do you know what you say to people can make hurt them really bad or make them feel really good? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Oh goodness. So let's try this week at school. Can y'all make a promise not to say anything ugly to your brothers or sisters or to your people at school or to your parents? Can y'all make that promise? You don't know. Well, at least you're telling the truth. <laughs> so let's, we're going to say a prayer, then we'll give you the bulletins when you leave. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for the amount of kids that we have up here. It's great to see the 
pews, uh, the altar full. It's great for me to have to kneel on the floor so they can sit down. Let's all be with them this week as they start in school. Let's let her use our mouths for to uplift the people and to tell people about you and not to break people down. Uh, let us have a good day and a good rest of the service. You know me, pray. Amen. Okay, goodbye. See you, Mr. Aaron. He'll give you a bullet. Okay. <laughs> Join with us as we stand to sing There is Power in the Blood.
they're coming. Children's Church is going to be dismissed over here to my left, your right. Appreciate that message and song. Good to be in God's house today, folks. It is, isn't it? This is His house. We're walking on holy ground, but not because of who we are or because of the church name. We're walking on holy ground because we're in. We're. This is the Lord's house. See, God's house can't be housed with brick and mortar, with windows. Hey, it's we're we're all sons and daughters of His. What a great and mighty God you and I serve. We read out of back a little bit ago. If you got your Bible, let me invite you to turn me to Acts, the first chapter, if you'd like. Let me uh, go over a couple things while you're turning there. Uh, so important, I think, that once you and I start walking with the Lord, uh, you and I, we need to realize that God is seeking to use every one of us so that he can be glorified. And honored in every one of our, through every step that we take, every word that we utter, every person we give in contact, come in contact with. And you've heard me say many times, uh, I think we have divine appointments and people come across our lives for a reason. And God certainly, indeed, He is seeking to use us. But the one thing you and I've got to do, I think I put in the title of the bulletin uh, for message today in the bulletin here getting past our comfort zone. And one of the uncomfortable zones that we have sometimes as children of the Lord is that uh, I'm not sure I'm real comfortable talking to somebody about the Lord. I'd rather be, I'd rather talk to somebody here about the Lord than for you and I to get to heaven and that person God brought across our path that you and I had an opportunity to talk to them and God could have used that to be an influence so that they could enter heaven's gate and I didn't talk to them or you didn't talk to them. Uh, folks, sometimes there are a lot of things in this world that make us uncomfortable, isn't it? Yeah, uh, we have our, our, our two grandsons here today and they're, uh, hey, uh, they're back in the back and Cindy's back in the back, isn't she? So, I, so, so you won't tell, will you? Because, you know, sometimes, let's face it, sometimes they can be handfuls. And, uh, uh, and so, you know, here talking to them, uh, when, uh, uh, when our kids were growing up, Cindy sang in the choir most of the time there. And all Cindy had to do, there's a look of a mama or a grandmother. All she had to do from that choir loft uh, at whatever church we were at was to give them that, hey, I called it, hey, behind the closed doors, can we talk as friends here today? She gave them the stink eye. And, and, and when that... Just like that, most of the time, not all the time. But there's something like that, that that's exactly. Uh, sometimes there are things get, uh, that make us very uncomfortable. Listen, somebody asked one time, does, does a child making some noise or whatever fidgeting? No, they don't make me uncomfortable a bit in the world. You know why? Because they're a blessing sent from the Lord uh, uh, when, when they're behaving and when they're not. They are a blessing. Because, listen, that's the future of our church. You look up here, I think I counted 12 up here today. And we've got some others that are here. What a blessing it is to, to have young people and young children. Uh, and we cycle through. As, as church. We've got a smaller youth group now. But that's what happens. You know, we get one, we have a large group. And then it gets a little smaller. And, and then we have a new group that's coming. Hey, uh, and I can't tell, but they, listen, there's some more coming after that. They are. Uh, I've got the inside track of the information here, here, there, but I won't tell uh, here. So, the, our Heavenly Father, He wants to walk with you a little closer every day. He really does. He cares about you. He loves, but also He wants you and I, He wants us to be used, uh, to use us so that He can be glorified and that He can receive honor 
for what's going on in your life and in my life. That's what the Lord wants. Jesus does not just want you and I to focus our full and, and, and full attention so that you and I can just be happy or content. He's got things for you, you and I to do. He's got people for you and I to interact with. Uh, in fact, I think somebody, uh, I don't know whether they're online or somebody was talking to Cindy, was saying, hey, that, that uh, we simply need to, to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, ask somebody, invite somebody to the church, but we need to go a step further. It may be that you need to invite them to your house for supper or a meal uh, or do something else or invite them to, to just sit in and talk. Because that, that's important, folks. Even in the times that we're living in, it's important that you and I are continuing to reach out in the name of Jesus Christ to help people. I'm so appreciative. We had a group that got together this week. We were over uh, at a home and they built a ramp. I thank you for what you did. For giving your time and your talents and abilities to help someone a family out when they're when they really are in need. You see, that's what that's what children of the Lord do. We minister to people. When someone's hungry, I'm grateful this church that, that we have several food ministries with Second Harvest, with others. We're participating, trying to make sure that no family here in this area goes to bed hungry. No child or adult that if they need food, that there is a resource and a place in which he or she or that family can receive the nourishment of food for their families. We also, we do things about with clothing ministries. Listen, one of the things Aaron was, and, and, and Aaron's worked hard to try to get us to where we could be on public grounds in our schools to pray. Now, some of us, we're not going to be real comfortable walking the halls. That's okay. We serve a Lord that you and I, we don't have to be present exactly that exact spot there to talk to the Lord about blessing our teachers and our students and keeping them safe. I can be in the parking lot or I can be at home talking to somebody about the Lord and asking God to look after every person. These are times like we've never seen before. There are times in which there are places in which we're more comfortable than, than other times. One of the things I want us to really think about here, there are times in which God calls us to get out of your comfort zones. And rest assured, you say, well, preacher, I don't have a comfort zone. Think about it. Uh, there are some places that uh, you feel very uncomfortable. Uh, in all of us. And sometimes Jesus may be calling you and asking you to get out of that comfort zone, do something that maybe is out of character for you. And I'm not saying do something that is adverse to what God's Word said, but what I'm telling you is to, is to take God's Word and let God's Word do something that is that normally you're not going to do, but God has laid before you or brought a person or a circumstance or something that God has already equipped you or I or our church to take care of that situation, to do it, to speak it, or to embrace it, or to take care of a need. Now, can we meet every need? Absolutely not. I'm so appreciative of this church. I can remember a number of years ago when we started a coat and shoe ministry. I had a divine appointment over at Food Line at Wingate. There's a, there a little girl and her mama that was over there that had tennis shoes that had seen their better day. You know what I mean when they seen their better day? They had already, the glue, the glue had almost completely come loose. It was raining sleeping a little bit. This little girl didn't have a coat, except one that was kind of raggedy and torn. 
And that too had seen its better day. But I saw that little girl that God loves. And this little girl, for whatever reason, she didn't have shoes. Her feet were wet. Her socks had to be wet and cold. And we brought that back to this congregation. And you've met that time and time again. Folks, that's getting out of our comfort zone. That's doing something that maybe we didn't used to do, but, but we're doing it in the name of Jesus Christ. That's important that you and I are utilizing the blessings that God has poured upon us so that we can reach down and touch people that we do not know or may not ever know. But if I can do something in the name of Christ to help someone, I need to do it. It's our responsibility. It's our obligation that Christ has given to us. And let me read, uh, i give you another little statement. God will never ask you or I, or God will never ask Austin Grove Baptist Church to do something that God has not already provided for us the means, and, uh, the means to accomplish that task. Let me recount that just a moment. God will never call on us as individuals to reach out and to do something for someone that he's not already prepared the path for you and I if we are obedient. Now, why is obedience important? I can see a need and know about a need for weeks and months and years. And I can be very comfortable just simply saying, that's bad. I'd like to see something done. It needs to be done. With me, with the sentiment of saying, I'm so sorry that's happening. Is that helping those that are in need? Sure, we can pray for them. And I know this is a praying church. But I'm grateful that we serve a church that doesn't just look at the circumstance and say, I'm sorry. We do what we can, when we can, if we can, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, to minister to people. Folks, that's what Jesus Christ called us to do. He said His Word is, is all over. I'm going to read out of the back of the statement I read in opening the service. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. Folks, the knowledge about Jesus Christ is all over. Even those of the Muslim faith, they have heard the name of Jesus. Other denominations that are worshiping little g gods that are dead. You and I, folks, we serve a Lord that's alive. Alive, folks. That's who we serve. We serve a Lord that is alive. And we're doing what we can. And this is just how vast the knowledge is covers the earth as the waters cover the sea. Look with me then at Acts, the first chapter, if you would. I'm going to read verses 3 through 8. I know our time will get away here very quickly. My caption says in my Bible, and I, I, appearances of the resurrected Christ. Appearances of the re resurrection of Christ. And I want, to, I want us to look and see of these final days that Jesus remains on this earth to continue to minister to his beloved disciples and other believers and tell them and give them final marching orders in person. You know, sometimes the Sanhedrin court and the high-ranking officials, uh, religious officials in the temple, they thought, we've taken care of this, this Jesus thing. Little did they know, it wasn't that they took the life of Jesus, it was that Jesus gave his life. And that was all God's plan. And Jesus was obedient to the Father's plan. Now Jesus talked to his Father many times. He would go to mountains, tops many times. He would go a little further in the garden 
to talk to his father. Look with me here at verse 3. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs. Jesus continued to show the power and the magnitude of that power to all who would be who would open their hearts and lives to that. You see, there are many today. We look for a sign. We like signs. We like to know for certain. You know, the 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 one thing that I think that really where the Bible talks about and tells us that we we have to trust God and have faith. Even though we're, these folks were privileged to be eyewitness of the simple fact that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and lives. Today, you and I, even though the Holy Spirit, if you know Christ is Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit's living in your heart and life today. And uh, he's seeking to to influence our lives and to guide us and to direct our paths even more uh, than, uh, uh, than what here in Jesus' day here we see in examples. And this is only a small portion of the encounters that Jesus Christ had with people. Jesus encountered a lot, a lot of people. Everywhere he went, he didn't find a person that he wasn't willing to save. Remember, Jesus would remind us he came to save those that were lost. Who's lost? All of us. Roman government? Yes. Those officials? Those soldiers? Yes. You remember even at foot of the cross, when Jesus cried out, it's finished. You remember where they were gambling for the clothes? And Jesus said, Father, don't you hold, please don't hold that to their stead. They really didn't know what they were doing. And one would say, surely this was the Son of God. When darkness would come, when the earth would shake. You see, all these things that Jesus Christ, he came showing to all of generation after generation who his Father is and who he continues to be and that he's seeking to walk with us closer and closer. Look with me as we continue. These here he... The scripture says here, by many infallible proofs, they're without anything, without any doubt. You know, there sometimes the world will tell us, this is true. Watch the news for two or three days consecutively, and there'll be a, a, there'll be a person that'll come on that is, quote, identified as an, quotation marks, expert within 24 to 36 or 72 hours that quote expert will be back on and will say well that is not right but what did they tell us they said this is truth when jesus christ tells us what is truth we don't have to wonder and look two or three days or a year or two down the road and wonder that is the same thing Jesus Christ will tell us next year or five years or ten years down the road if time stands upon this old earth. And you know what? It hadn't changed. God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And look with me as, continue, as we continue being reminded of this. There are unfallible truths being seen of them, and look what he says, even gives us the precise timing, 40 days, and that's the time that Jesus would remain upon this earth, giving his disciples and followers the last orders here personally, directly into their lives, and Jesus was speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. You know, sometimes we place so much importance on the things. You've heard me say many times throughout these many years that we've been privileged to pastor this church. Those things are momentary. Those things are going to be something that is going to get old. Don't look at me that way, like that. But uh, uh, 
Uh, but you know, we are. Let's face it. Things change. Things change. But God, in His dealings with every one of us, never changes. But yet, things on this old earth change. That's why, folks, when we come together service after service, Sunday after Sunday, Wednesday after Wednesday, and other special services, I need not be afraid to raise my hand and heart and say, thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing in my life. Because what you're doing, Father, is that you're helping me to be drawn closer and closer to you. And Jesus Christ was helping all those who were listening, and it still helps us today to realize that we're dealing with the infallible truths of God, of Christ. And then look with me at verse 4. And being assembled together with them, Jesus commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. Now, does God always answer our prayer just like that? At, in our timing? More times than not, folks, the timing that you and I are asking God to help us or to intervene on our behalf, uh, more times than not, what are we doing? When do we want something to be shown from God? Right now. I don't want to wait. We're impatient. Hey, I remember with our firstborn, and we couldn't afford it, but we bought a microwave, uh, a microwave from J.C. Penney. Boy, this dates me terribly. And uh, uh, we were at school, we were there at, at Shelby, and uh, and we thought that was the best thing the world had ever seen, except Jesus Christ was to uh, that we were able to put a baby bottle in a microwave and zap that thing, and uh, and uh, about two or three o'clock, and you can't half see, and and uh, warm that baby bottle up, and you're ready to go. We thought that was it. That's it. You know, we wanted it now, the old-fashioned way. Turn the stove on, and that's when you want gas because it does heat it a little quicker, and you warm that baby a bottle up. We are a society that likes convenience. But more times than not, the timing that you and I want does not correlate or come alongside of the timing that God has. Now, that doesn't mean God loves you or I less. It simply means that God loves you and I more. Because he desires for you and I good things. He desires that you and I might be blessed and blessed indeed by, the, by him. Now, does that mean always monetary? Absolutely not. Because monetary, Jesus would tell us, hey, you got to be sure, be careful where your treasures are stored. <laughs> he didn't tell us to store, to store them in the bank. Why did he not tell us to store them in the bank? He said, thieves could break in and all kinds of other things could happen. It's gone. He said, really, the things that you and I really ought to put value and put trust in, it ought to be that you and I are trusting the things that are eternal. And that's what really what Jesus Christ was offering every one of us. He was offering us the eternal things that were going to be there when you and I come face to face with the Lord Jesus Christ. It's so important, folks, that we realize. And Jesus Christ, as he was getting ready to depart this earth, he was getting ready, trying to prepare all those that had been his followers and were continuing to follow because what he was leaving them there to do was what many say was going to be an impossibility. But, folks, they were wrong. Whoever they is, they're wrong. The gospel flourished. The church added to those that they had need of daily. The Holy Spirit unleashed a revival upon all of the world, unlike anything the world had ever seen before. Look with me a little further here as we continue reading. So he told them not to depart from Jerusalem yet. They were to wait. Which saith he, you have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, 
but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. The coming of the Holy Spirit, folks, is so, such a blessing that God came to set up residence in your heart, in your life, and in mine. I don't know about you, I need the Lord Jesus Christ. I need Him. I don't need Him just on Sunday or Wednesday, but yet that's what the way sometimes we as society we like to do, we say this is the day God, or this two hours, or this one hour, this is for God. My question to that is, is that enough? I don't want God to ask anyone in our congregation or anywhere where, why did you not come to my house? You said you believed in me, you said you trusted me, you prayed to me, and then why did you not serve me? You've heard me, heard me use the analogy a number of times throughout the years that the church has got to be the tool shed. That when you and I need to accomplish a task or something that God has, has blessed and God has told us and revealed to us that we need to accomplish, we need to come to God's house. We need to pray. We need to get on our knees and say, God, is this what you want me to do? If this is it, then God, I want to be able to follow you irregardless. We sing that old hymn that says, I'm going to follow you, but there'll be no turning back. But I'm afraid in this society, in this world that we're living in, so many times we turn back. We're willing to pay a price to serve God to search to some degree, but we're not willing to go all the way. A number of years ago, Cindy and I were privileged at the Cove to meet uh, Greg Laurie. Some of you maybe listened to him on Christian radio. He's still on and does some number of crusades throughout the years. One of the things that Greg did, he brought an empty wheelbarrow. It was a metal one, by the way, into the church, so, so, so we were told. And he brought a bunch of rocks into it. Now, you, you say, well, that wouldn't fit with us because, you know, we got nice carpet and all. Now, Greg's in a, uh, Cindy was privileged, she was on business out, out there and drove. He's in a warehouse setting. Nothing fancy. Not the glass cathedral, he's in a warehouse. But he put a stack of rocks. He asked every person after, after the service, if you're all in for Jesus Christ, I want you to come on that rock pile and I want you to reach down and pick up a rock. And I want you to take it over that wheelbarrow and I don't want you simply just to set it down. I want you to drop that to where we can all hear you're all in for Jesus Christ. Can God honor all in lives for him? He can, can't he? Is that what God is desiring for every one of us here this morning? In September of 2021, is God saying to Austin Grove Baptist Church, I want you all in to do what I've called you to do. Folks, this is not Leon's words. This is the words of Christ. This is Christ seeking to prepare us for the journey of life that we're on. And we're all on it. I'm not sure how long the journey of my life will continue. I pray it's going to be a long, long time. But I know where my life, when this earthly life's over, I know where I'm going to be. It's in heaven. And it's not because of anything Leon's done other than receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. That's the only reason. Look with me a little further here. I know our time's going to get away pretty quickly here. Listen as it continues on. He reminded us of John. And John was baptized. But he said, I'm going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Look at verse 6. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him. We're curious people, aren't we? We want to ask questions. We want to be sure. I did not get to be in the, into the labor and delivery of my first child, but I did the second and third child. And the doctor each time gave me the option that I could cut the umbilical cord. Do you know what I said, said with that there? And Cindy just said, let's get on with it now. But I was asked, here? Are you sure here? And I looked over at the nurse. Is this where I need to cut it? I didn't want to do anything wrong. You know, we question things. Listen to the believers here. They question. They hear they were reasoning as Jesus Christ was getting ready to ascend back to, to the Father. They were asked, they were, they were, they had some questions. 
and they ask him, middle part of verse 6, Wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? Wow. Jesus had been with them three years, and here they were still talking about a political king. They still had that ideology and that reason and logic, and that's really what the people of Israel, they really wanted was, they wanted a political king. They wanted Jesus to come in, the Son of God, the Messiah, who had been prophesied all throughout the Old Testament, that when he came, he'll take care of Rome or Babylon or any of the other nations that had come in. That Jesus would rule with an arm clad hand. And that he would take care of that. He would cast them out and once again to restore to his glory Israel. But Jesus dared not. In fact, there were times in Jesus' ministry. That Jesus knew. In fact, after the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus, he left there because he said he knew that they were going to want to proclaim him the next day. They were going to want to proclaim him king. Jesus didn't come here to be that kind of king. He came to be king of kings, lord of lords. But it was not to set up a political machine. That was not to be. And you see, they had been with Jesus face to face three years. Still didn't get it. Really, they still had questions. Look a little further here. Look as it continues on. And he said unto them in verse 7, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. In other words, folks, there are things that you and I do not need to know about our Father. Some will tell you, and there's a few around, that they're going to tell you they know exactly that time that Jesus Christ is going to return. The Word of God says no man knows the time or the hour. But yet from time to time I'm going to get a book or a pamphlet from somebody uh, uh, there's one gentleman up in North Carolina, I think he's recounted four or five times throughout uh, our years, and, he kept, and, and, and after Jesus doesn't return, he writes, a, he writes another little pamphlet or a little small book and that says, uh, this is why that Jesus did not return at that particular time. See, so he's always rational. We're trying to ration, uh, rationalize our answers. That's not what Jesus... Jesus here was saying to them, Look, my father's got the plan. My father doesn't have a plan. He's got the plan already set in motion, already in place. God already had the plan for your life and my life. That's the Lord that you and I serve, that he's there for us. Look at verse 8. But you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. The Holy Spirit is going to give to you the, the authority and the presence of the Holy Spirit to be able to see many things accomplished in the name of Jesus Christ. The world needed to see and believe and trust in Jesus because there were going to be people in their day, but there were going to be also generation after generation that will never see Jesus, Emmanuel, God in the flesh. How are they going to believe? They're going to have to believe in faith. In faith. Look at the middle part of verse 8. That God is coming to me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. You see, many times we equate that. You turn over to the last chapter in uh, Matthew, you know, the great, what we call the Great Commission. That you go preach, teach, and baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And to the uttermost parts of the world. Then Jesus, once again, is going to remind them. Listen. But these folks are no different than you and I. Sometimes we need to be reminded several times. No doubt we need to be reminded. Let me just, in, in closing here, let me just ask you a couple questions here. Where do we go from here? As a child of God, am I where I need to be? Not in what lines up with what my church says, the most important thing is, is your life lined up where God would have you to be? 
And rest assured, God has the plan, and he'll call your name. You're not a number with God. God knows who you are, and God loves you. He loves you in the good times when we are good and do the good things, but also he loves us when we're adverse to what his word says and we do things that we know better. That's a great God that we serve, folks. He loves us that much. So where do we go? We have an opportunity here today that I know that there are things I could have done better and I should have done better and I want to do better. I can change that today. I can make a concerted effort and a decision that as for me, I'm going to follow Jesus to the very best of my ability from this point forward. I've got to resolve that I'm going to follow Jesus Christ. What are we going to say? What are we going to teach? What are we going to do? We do what God has prescribed in this, his book. Nothing more, nothing less. I'm not going to add anything. You know what the world wants to do today? The world wants to make themselves feel, feel and look a little bit better by adding to God's word. Or And what are we doing? We said a little bit uh, last week. We're watering the gospel down. The Bible very explicitly tells us, do not add to, do not take away from God's word. God's word, is, it was able to stand on its own without me years ago, and God's word, when Leon's gone to heaven, it'll be able to stand alone. Then also if this old world stands. That's the Lord that you and I are serving. He's with us. Jesus Christ was saying to his disciples, you go here in Jerusalem, you wait, because the power of the Holy Spirit is going to be upon you. You're going to do great and mighty and marvelous things in the, in the name of Christ. What are you going to do? You see, Jesus, he, he is continually seeking to reach out in every one, of, every one of our lives and to do mighty things. I hope and pray that you and I are able to see the importance of being sure that we're focusing where we need to focus, and that is on Jesus Christ and nowhere else. Because you see, when you and I lose focus on the things that really matter, we will slowly, but surely, and inevitably, we'll start that wandering away from Jesus Christ. I think we're living in a time in which that we have seen America. I know in my lifetime and a number of your uh, uh, of the folks that are here, in your lifetime, you've seen America slowly but surely and methodically we have moved away from what our currency says in God we trust. We've seen that move. And it went away so easily. See, that's why the devil will work. He, he slips it in on us, and it's as though it won't matter. And he lies to us and says, this one time won't hurt. But what did it do? It took, a, it took ideology and thinking and getting to the place that we were straying away from what God's Word said, what said is important. And not only what is important, but what is essential. Now I want you to get that po point here this morning. It's essential, folks. This is, God's word is essential. You know, the government wanted to tell us uh, uh, several months ago what, is, uh, what jobs are essential and what are non-essential. Non this is more essential than anything that you and I could ever find. And that's not, and I'm not demeaning the medical profession or anybody else, but I'm telling you that our soul, in fact, the scripture reminds us not to fear what man can do to us, but you better fear what God. You better think about that the Lord, he's in, he's in charge of our soul. So that's why you and I need to be sure that's where we're at. If we're not careful, we'll slide away, surely, away from our Lord so quickly. What is current? Let me ask you three questions. What's currently in the way of you growing in Christ? Folks, a lot of that answer, it lies within self. We decide what we're going to do. We decide whether we're going to get closer to the Lord. We decide how important. We, 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 
prioritize the things that are important in our lives. We say, well, preacher, I don't have time. Do you think that excuse will, will fare very well when you and I say that to the Lord one day? But Lord, I didn't have time. Last time I checked, folks, every one of us in this room, we had the same amount of time. Now, I may not have, each one of us have different priorities. We do exactly what, what we want to do. We choose. Old Testament writer says, choose you this day. Whom are you going to serve? Are you going to serve the Lord or are you going to serve the world? What is it in your life that is causing you to lose focus on Jesus Christ? This is tough questions, folks. Whom is God calling you to focus on today? You know, we talked about the one. Who's your one? See, I'm convinced the outreach programs of the church is going to be, it's going to be one-on-one -on -one with individuals. I pray that God, every day I pray that God's going to lay one person on every person in our church's mind and heart. And I pray that you're going to be that person that's going to be willing to get out of your comfort zone and to maybe talk to that person or email that person or text that person or whatever you want to do and whatever mode of, uh, of communication you want to use that you're going to get involved in that person's life and let them know that you love them and you care about them and you care enough to tell them about Jesus Christ or if they're not involved in church, that, you, that you're inviting them to come into God's house. There are a lot of people today that are saying, hey, nobody's invited me. Don't let that be said of us, invite somebody to come to church. Jesus Christ, he stands ready to receive us. What are we doing? Most of us here this morning, you're our child of God, and I'm so grateful for that, and I rejoice and stand alongside of you as I have had the privilege to continue to have the privilege of serving you as your pastor. It is a privilege. But also at the same token, I know that there are times in which that God will call me to get out of my comfort zone, and, and I know he does the very same thing today. He's telling us sometimes, get out of your comfort zone and be a witness for me. Talk to somebody about knowing Christ. Invite somebody to come into his house. Listen, we serve a mighty God, as we've said several times in this message. He stands ready to serve you and to help you. And he'll help our neighbor, our friend, whoever God brings across our paths, will you do that? So I ask you, Christian, whether you're a member here or not, serve the Lord. Come to God. If you're here this morning, you're not sure about salvation. Will you come and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? You see, Jesus Christ, he was real 2,000 years ago. He's never been more real than he is today. And the Roman government did not put Jesus Christ to, to death. He lives. And because he lives, every one of us can live also. And Jesus Christ may be calling you to get out of the comfort zone. He may be calling you, as the example I gave, pick up the rock. If you're all in for Jesus Christ, put it in the wheelbarrow. Let's stand together as we sing just a, a few stanzas of a hymn invitation. Will you come? Just as you are. I'll be here. This altar is open. If you cannot kneel down, we'll make room here on the front seats for you just to talk to the Lord. Listen, we're family. We're part of the kingdom. Come. Just as you are. See, that's the wonderful thing. I don't have to change to come to Jesus. Jesus will change me and will help me to change once I come. He's waiting on you. Our, yours and my response to him. I need to come. Will you come today to Jesus Christ?
give Him your all in all this day. Just a few more moments, we're going home. Will you come? Hear the master's call, folks. Bow your heads, if you would, please. We ask the musicians just to quietly play. Let's, let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for every man, woman, and child that has seen fit to come this day to worship you with all of our being. Lord, I thank you that uh, your Holy Spirit stands ready to convict us and show us that when there are times in which that we could serve you in a better fashion that your Holy Spirit's there showing us. Lord, thank you for that. Thank you, Lord, to hear this day that uh, we come together to renew our belief in you and our trust in you, but also, Father, to receive instructions of what we're to do this coming week. Because across the people that are just in this service and their earlier service, Father, we're going to reach over a thousand people that you're going to bring across our paths and we're going to have an opportunity to serve you in some way, shape, or fashion. Lord, I want every person to do you will. So Lord, help us to be obedient to you. So Lord, hear our prayers. Take care of us. Put that hedge of protection around us. Hear our prayers. Fathers, we go our separate ways. Lord, Watch after us and bring us back at the next appointed time here in this, your house. For we ask it in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. May God bless. Have a wonderful afternoon and a wonderful week. See you Wednesday night or we'll see you online. God bless.